Imagining the sixth dimension. What's the difference between the fifth dimension and the sixth dimension? With this approach to visualizing the dimensions, that question comes up a lot. After all, if the fifth dimension includes every possible state for the universe which can be connected to the now any one of us are currently observing, why do we need to talk about anything beyond that? Let's pull out a piece of paper and ponder this question further. First of all, put a dot near one edge of the paper and label it the Big Bang. Likewise, place a dot near some other edge of the paper and label it the End of the Universe. Finally, draw a line that passes through those two points and place a point somewhere near the middle of that line which will label you. Okay, if that middle point represents you right now, then let's place another point nearby but not on the line we've just drawn. Do you see how this point could represent some other version of you, such as the one where a childhood accident completely changed your life? Or even just the version of you that got bored with this entry and stopped watching 10 seconds ago? There could be a new line which extends from the Big Bang and passes through this alternate version of you, and each of those could be thought of as a one-dimensional line. But the only way the line for version 1 and the line for version 2 could be considered simultaneously is if we were to consider the 2D plane of that paper we were drawing on. In fact, we could place another point earlier on one of the lines and say that it represents your moment of conception, and then imagine a ray of possible lines representing all of the versions of you that could possibly have existed from your moment of conception onwards, and they could all be contained within this 2D plane. Now let's think of a different point, but in this case let's imagine that it's floating a few inches above the paper. Perhaps this new point represents the version of the universe where dinosaurs never became extinct, which would mean that you, as we know you, wouldn't even exist on that line. We can imagine a one-dimensional line that passes through the Big Bang point on the paper and this new point. We can imagine a different 2D plane that passes through our first or second line and this new dinosaurs line. But here's something important about what we've been visualizing. The only way we consider all three lines at the same time is by using the third dimension. I hope it's obvious by now that the point line plane postulate tells us the logic we've just used to think about the first, second and third dimension is directly translatable to the fourth, fifth and sixth. Which means that with a piece of paper and a bit of imagination, we've already visualized the first six dimensions of our reality. But wait, some of you might be thinking, wasn't it arbitrary for me to place the dinosaur's line outside the plane of my paper? Couldn't I just have easily placed a point at the center of the paper, called it the Big Bang, then imagined that all around the outside edge of the paper were points representing all the different universes that could have resulted from the initial conditions that created our unique universe with its locked-in, fine structure constant? And you may be surprised to hear that I'm willing to agree with that statement. From the initial conditions of our universe, we can get to any of the possible universes which the many worlds interpretation tells us really exist, just as real as the one we're observing. From anywhere else beyond the Big Bang though, we're already seeing a pairing away of possibilities. When one version of the universe is observed, the other universes are not. And causality shows us that this renders some of those other universes permanently inaccessible from that point forward on our entropy-driven line of time. How would you or I get to the universe where it's this point in time, which we call the 21st century, but dinosaurs never became extinct? Everett's theory tells us that a version of the universe must exist where dinosaurs are living and dying right now, and those dinosaurs are observing all the different versions of the universe where they still exist. So why can't you or I get there from here? In other words, if everything is probabilistic outcomes, why does it appear that there is zero possibility that the next possible now for us might include this dinosaur's world line? The answer is there is a missing degree of freedom. If you and I were within the sixth dimension rather than the fifth, then we would be able to leap across those different world lines and get to those other versions of the universe which are not causally connected to the one we're in right now. And as we said last time, this is because you and I are ants, not flies. 
Every instant that we observe is one Planck frame beyond the instant before, which gives us the impression that the fifth dimension is compactified or curled up on itself. If the fourth dimension is like the straight line of a garden hose stretched out on the ground, the fifth dimension is like an ant walking inside that hose, while a fly inside that hose would be able to flip from one location to another without having to worry about fifth dimensional causality. What we're talking about with the sixth dimension then is the phase space of the set of parallel universes resulting from our universe's unique initial conditions. A phase space, to quote Wikipedia, is a space in which all possible states of a system are represented, with each possible state of the system corresponding to one unique point in the phase space. Let's sum all this up. Everett's Many Worlds interpretation says there is a wave function which encompasses every possible state for our universe, and I'm saying that's the sixth dimension. But because we're in the fifth dimension, Choosing from a set of causally related outcomes that are available to us one Planck frame after another, there are versions of the universe which have nothing to do with us, like the version where I died in a car crash yesterday, or the version where dinosaurs never became extinct. Likewise, the version where I decided to rob a bank yesterday must exist, but with my free will I chose not to observe that universe. All of those other universes have nothing to do with the universe I'm observing, even though I can acknowledge their existence within the sixth dimension. So, what's outside our phase space? Thinking back to that piece of paper we started from, there are a few other ideas we can glean from this. First of all, that first and second point we drew, representing the beginning and end of the universe, can be joined with a line. But more properly, what we're talking about then is a line segment. A true line would pass through those two points and extend past the edge of our paper and out towards infinity in either direction. This gives us a way to think about how both before and after our universe is the same thing. A return to an underlying state which is outside the system representing all possible versions of our unique universe. But wait, there's that word again. System. In my original animation, I described the point we start from as being something that indicates a position within a system. As we just saw, a phase space includes all possible versions of a system, with each possible state of the system corresponding to one unique point within the phase space. So we can extend our analogy here to think of our paper as being on an endless landscape covered with other papers, none of them touching many of them widely separated from each other, each of them representing other universes or systems with other initial conditions and basic physical laws. The multiverse landscape. And within some of those other systems would be creatures sufficiently advanced to be able to look around and wonder how they ended up in a universe where the laws of physics appear to have been uniquely fine-tuned in a way to allow their universe to exist. This idea is known as the Anthropic Principle. As I say in my song, The Anthropic Viewpoint. If there's other worlds and we just missed them, the way to know what's outside our system. We're like goldies living in a bowl. Once we're young, then we can never know. All we can do is theorize, cause we can never get outside. Coincidentally, as we talk about the sixth dimension, it's interesting to note that cosmologist Martin Rees has told us only six basic physical constants need to be defined to create our unique universe. Check out his book, Just Six Numbers, The Deep Forces That Shape the Universe, for more about these concepts. It's also interesting to note that string theory predicts there could be 10 to the power of 500 other universes out there in the multiverse landscape, each with its own unique physical laws. So we can't get to those other universes, those other systems, from the sixth dimensional phase space representing our universe. Why not? 
because we haven't achieved that degree of freedom yet within our approach to visualizing the dimensions, which of course will lead us to our next entry, Imagining the Seventh Dimension. Thank you.